Over the course of history, we've had many diseases spread like wildfire, even getting rid of entire civilizations. But what about the plagues? These five plagues you won't even believe existed. Before Mexico was Mexico, it was called New Spain, and that's because of the Spanish Inquisition. And in the mid 1500s in New Spain, dozens and then thousands and then millions of people started to get mysteriously ill, very ill, and then dropping dead. To make this very simple, a bunch of ships showed up to Mexico with Europeans on them, came in and made the land their own. Before that, Mexico belonged to the Aztecs along with several other civilizations and indigenous people. But again, this is informal history, not three hour documentary about each entry here in the top five list history. The indigenous called this sickness Kokolitzli. Now this term has been used over and over, which is why we're going with great pestilence. Now keep in mind, in the 1500s, there wasn't much notion of germs or disease in that fashion. We didn't really understand. And even if you're from Europe or you're from Mexico, you had no idea. Your understanding of germs, disease were basically the same. And of course, Europe have very different sets of animals, people, and diseases. So if you're from Europe, you're going to be immune to things that people in North America aren't. And because of that, even without trying, you could definitely wipe out an entire nation by bringing something that maybe you have immunity to as a European, but you don't if you're from North America. Now this disease that nobody really to this day can decipher what it is, there are of course theories, which we'll get into at the end of the century, but we don't really know what it is. And to make it matters much worse, the living conditions were terrible. When the Europeans came in to colonize what is now Mexico, New Spain at the time, they were putting the Aztecs and other indigenous people in terrible living conditions, trying to convert them to be Christians, trying to convert them so that they were just basically working on agriculture. They were changing the way they lived and they lived in these basically what are squalor type situations, very unhygienic situations. On top of that, a lot of people were malnourished. This was the worst drought in 500 years. It went all the way from Venezuela up to Canada. This was a big deal in the 1500s. So from 1545 to 1548, which is the range of this pandemic, or let's call it a plague for the sake of this video, these people would become sick. They would first become ill, and within days, high fever, nausea, so many symptoms you wouldn't want, but within two to seven days, that's a wrap. You're generally probably not going to make it. And although it was worse for indigenous people, more of them got sick, it wasn't discriminatory. Many of the Europeans got sick as well. All in all, when it was all said and done, five to 15 million deaths. The fourth worst plague of all time is the plague of Justinian, one that you might have never heard of because it happened a really long time ago. Constantinople was the capital of Rome. It became that in the Roman Empire in 330. This was during the reign of Constantine, and then 211 years later, as much as 40% of its population was wiped out by mysterious illness. 541 to 549 is generally the accepted timeline of when this event happened or when this pandemic or plague occurred. Again, this is a time before modern science. So even the last entry in Mexico, there was at least a little bit of advance. In this time in the 500s, bathing was optional. And some folks would say, you don't need to, or it's a temptation, it's a luxury, it's a sin. This is a very different time than it is today. The plague of Justinian was thought to originate in Europe, brought in by infested rats on grain ships. Now this made sense because at the time, on these trade routes, a lot of rats would colonize in these ships and then eat the grain or eat whatever it was that they were transporting because food was a little bit more scarce than it is today. It was said up to 10,000 people per day were killed in Constantinople alone, although this did spread across the Mediterranean and lots of places in that part of Europe. And as you'd imagine, bodies piled up. There was no places that you could just plant a body. So a lot of the times these bodies were put in mass graves. People were getting very sick and they just wanted to get rid of them as quickly as possible. The final death count varies, but no matter how you look at it, this is a giant number. And keep in mind, the world was much smaller. There was not 8 billion people in the year 500. Number three. HIV and AIDS. This one is the most recent on the list. The epidemic started officially in 1981. Now keep in mind, 
AIDS and HIV, we didn't even know they were linked until very recent times. And it is thought that the current form of what is HIV and AIDS wasn't even around until the early 1900s. There are a few things we know. We know that it likely stemmed from a non-human primate that jumped over to humans. We know that it probably originated in parts of Africa, and it's often thought that the Republic of the Congo is where it started in the first place. And that makes sense why most of the cases are in Africa. Now, this doesn't have an end date. Technically, we're still in this epidemic. We're technically in this plague, if you wanted to call it that. Now, a lot has changed, and I'd like to get into that because in the 1980s, if you had AIDS, if you were told you have AIDS, this was a giant risk, a giant scare, and a death sentence, more or less. If you didn't have money and access to the best medicine in the 80s or even in the 90s and early 2000s, and you were diagnosed with HIV or AIDS, the chances of you living a long and healthy life were pretty slim. And we still have tons of infections today. 39 million people are thought to be infected, but every year the number of infected drops. At the peak, 3.3 million people globally every single year were infected with the virus. Today, that's down to about 630,000 every single year, with two thirds of them being in Africa. Now today, we see celebrities like Charlie Sheen, Magic Johnson, and they look perfectly healthy. Magic Johnson looks as healthy as a horse. But think back in the 90s. Guys like Eazy E, who didn't have the same fate. Times have changed, and if you have AIDS now, it is a very different outcome than it would be if you had it in the early 2000s or before. It is often said this is the greatest time to be alive, and if you are infected with HIV or AIDS, which are linked, HIV is the cause of AIDS, this is definitely the best time to be alive. You've got better chance now than ever before, and really all it comes down to is treatment. Can you get treatment? or not, and now we have a lot of available options. The mind-blowing stat when reviewing this information, 13% of the adults in South Africa have HIV or AIDS. So it's still around, it's still around in big, big numbers, and it's just bigger in certain parts than others. Number two, one you've probably got sick of hearing over the last four years, it's not COVID-19, it's the Spanish flu. This was the flu. This was the plague that was compared to COVID-19 when it first started four years ago as of recording this video. An interesting note, the Spanish flu didn't come from Spain and it doesn't have Spanish origins likely. The reason it's called the Spanish flu is because 1918, when it started in the first place, well, there was a big war going on. You might've heard of it. It's called World War I. And oftentimes to keep morale up, a lot of countries would suppress information coming from around the world to make people just feel not sad, to keep the morale up. But Spain was neutral and Spain didn't suppress this information. So when these cases started to get bigger and more numerous around the world, especially in the US, well, Spain, didn't suppress this information. They talked about it freely in their news and therefore it became the Spanish flu. Some countries started to call it the American flu, which will make sense in a minute, but America doesn't really like when you say things like that, so they changed it to Spanish flu. And in a war, you don't want America to be mad at you. America. Yeah. Heck yeah. What you the better name is the Great Influenza Epidemic, which is what it is. It's a type of influenza. In fact, it's a type of H1N1. I'm not gonna get into pathology here. I'm way too not, I'm, it's way, way over my head. But you might remember H1N1 if you're a younger person from 2009, the swine flu. They're connected, let's just not really, we don't have an hour here. The first case was from Kentucky in 1918, or the first reported case, or that's what we largely agree on now. And this was in a military camp. People that were dying, at least of American citizens, were in their 20s, males in their 20s which is not what you'd think because the most susceptible age were young people and old people, not people in the prime of their life. The thing is, there are more people on ships, in groups, in trenches, things like that. And the reason was, I mean, this was the end of the war. I think this, I said the war was going on and this ended in about 1920, 1921. The point is, there are more people in military units, on ships and things like that, even at the end of the war, than basically any other group. So you have tons and tons of young men together. If it goes through once, it goes through basically everybody. It is very, very contagious. And it is much more deadly than the last pandemic, which we're kind of tired of talking about, will not make this list. The first case was in March, and later in the year, the Red Cross decided we're gonna give away masks, especially to police, hospitals, things like that. Even if you weren't in a 
capacity of a hospital or a police or fire or anything like that. You were encouraged to wear a mask. People would turn you away if you weren't wearing a mask. This is all sounding very familiar, I'm sure. And it was basically common flu symptoms and it depended because there was three or four different waves depending on the consensus. But in the waves, it was different severities. So some of them were just like a common flu. Some of them resulted in hemorrhaging, basically. So it was really, really terrible to get. Uh, it was a higher mortality rate than the one that we just went through. And all of the numbers are 17 to 100 million global deaths. After going through one ourselves, who knows what the number actually is? Who knows how it was actually calculated? Who knows what the number actually was? But either way, it was a very deadly event that lasted several years. And number one, you guys already know, the Black Death, otherwise known as the bubonic plague, which makes sense because there's three different types of plagues. The bubonic plague is the one that doesn't infect your blood. It doesn't go after your lungs. Well, sort of, it goes after your lymph nodes. So what would generally happen in the 1300s when this happened is your lymph nodes in your groin or maybe in your armpits would start to swell maybe the size of golf balls, or if you're really unlucky, the size of lemons or apples. And when this happened, they would sometimes rupture or burst. Sometimes you would get sores that would rupture or burst, and it would be all sorts of disgusting bodily fluids that would then pour out of you and be very infectious. We think that, or the general consensus rather, is that the bubonic plague came from a ship, often called death ships, into a port in Europe where most of the damage was done. These ships were docked there, and when they came to port, they were full of very sick and lots of dead people and lots and lots of rats. Now, this time, rats infested ships. This was just the normal, it was the way that it is. It's dark, it's damp, there's food, there's gonna be rats. The rats would come off of the ships full of fleas, and although there is another example or another theory that the fleas were actually fleas for humans and then the lice that jumped from human to human, the initial agreed upon idea was the fleas from the infected rats would jump from the rat to the human to another human, and that is how it was spread. Of course, the bubonic plague can also be spread simply by touching on someone's clothing giving someone a fist bump, and it might even be mutated so that it was airborne. We don't really know because none of us were around in the 1300s. The agreed upon timeline was 1346 to 1353, and in that time, it depends on what number you're going with, but up to 50% of all Europeans dead. That's it, that's a wrap. The crazy part is the bubonic plague at the time, if you were a European, it was thought that 0.2% of the population had any immunity whatsoever. Now it seems like if you were a Caucasian living in Europe, your immunity level is probably about 15. So if you died, you didn't spread your genes. If you lived, you did, which is why a much higher percentage of Europeans and descendants of Europeans have the immunity to the bubonic plague, which is still around by the way. There was just an outbreak in Madagascar only a few years ago. Something, someone would become infected. I describe what happens with the lymph nodes. You get sores, you'd start maybe having respiratory issues. You start bleeding from your orifices oftentimes. And then within two to seven days, you're dead. The problem is you're asymptomatic for the first couple of days sometimes. So you can catch it for two days, walk around, be handshaking people, breathing on people, touching people's clothing, and then everybody's infected and they didn't even know it until it's too late. And for the most part, if you got the bubonic plague in those times, there's really nothing they can do for you. It's a death sentence. What's interesting is during World War I and parts of Europe, there were places that were found that were in the 1300s were inhabited by large amounts of people. They were full cities. And then because the bubonic plague wiped through them and destroyed the entire population, nature took them over and then you show up and they're basically untouched since the middle of the 1300s. So those are the top five worst plagues in human history. What videos do you wanna see coming up? Let me know in the comment section below. Please do hit the like button. And because I do videos every weekend, that means I'll see you in the next one.